I need to tell you something. Um, we're going to do it the Jesuit way. We're going to do it by me asking you two questions. The first question is, how many rockets have Palestinian militant groups altogether, meaning Hamas, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the PIJ, and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, PFLP, how many rockets have they fired on Israel in the 21st century? So from year 2001 to 2023, including this week, so in 23 years. How many rockets were fired towards Israel in 23 years? Just throw a number. You can even pause the video if you wanted. I'm going to give you three seconds to respond. So the answer is uh, 28,800 uh, rockets and 3,700 mortar shells. So a total of 32,500 rockets and mortar shells were launched by Hamas and PIJ onto Israel over the course of 23 years. Now, considering a potential margin of error of 10%, let's just round the sum up to 36,000. Now, whether that is too many rockets or too few rockets is um, absolutely not the point I'm trying to drive here. I have a bigger, more important point to make later, so just bear with me and please keep this number in mind. Now, on to my second question. How many people have those 36,000 rockets and mortars killed over the course of 23 years? 36,000 rockets were launched over the course of 23 years. How many people were killed as a result? Throw a number. You can also pause if you want to think about it. I've asked this question to a dozen people this week, including journalists and political activists and random friends of mine who have to deal with being on the receiving end of my midnight messages. Honestly, not one person said at less than 5,000. So I am asking you, how many people were killed by Hamas and PIJ rockets, rockets and or mortar shells uh, over the course of 23 years? Ready for the answer? 69 people were killed by 36,000 rockets launched over 23 years, including the five quote-unquote wars on Gaza. To be precise, 69 people, uh, two goats, and a number of cows. Luckily, Zionist and Israeli sources keep a really good record of kills, sharing their name, age, location, and profession, and I've compiled them. And here is the list that we are going to read together. So amongst those people, you've got 41 adult civilians, including three Arab Israelis, 10 Israeli army soldiers, four Israeli children, including one two-year-old plus three four-year-olds, two Palestinian children, including one six-year-old and one 13-month-old baby, five Palestinian adult civilians, one Jordanian civilian, two Thai civilians, four foreign workers, plus a number of cows and two goats. I am not trying to posit whether that is too many victims or too few victims. In the world that I wish to live in, the number I strive for is zero victims on planet Earth, but that discussion is better suited for another time as it is not the primary point I aim to make. This is the point I aim to make. Does the Israeli government genuinely believe that people are naive enough to believe that Palestinian militant groups have what it takes to fire a rocket and kill more than 500 people at Al Ahli Hospital in one go? They were barely able to achieve 10% of those kills over the course of 23 years with 36,000 rockets fired. And don't talk to me about the Iron Dome because the Iron Dome became functional only in 2011. Hamas and PIJ had a full 10 years of rocket launching without an Iron Dome. And the number of victims is at 28, during, 28 kills during those 10 years. So allow me to say that it is remarkably foolish and outrageously absurd to even contemplate marketing the idea that Hamas or PIJ, PIJ have what it takes to destroy a building and kill 500 humans with one rocket, when on average they killed 0.0000773 people per year per rocket over a 23-year period. But the Israelis want to have us believe that in contrast, no, no, in one night, a single rocket killed 500 people. To add insult to injury, you should also know that the rockets uh, used by Hamas or PIJ, the Qassam rockets, are propelled by a mixture of sugar and potassium nitrate, which is a common fertilizer, and the warhead is filled with TNT and urea nitrate, which is also another common fertilizer. The Qassam rockets are basically made from common civilian products. 
It doesn't mean that they cannot cause a lot of damage, but um, absolutely not to the devastating degree that we saw at, at a hospital. Take a look at the effect that the Qassam rockets create when they land. Okay, now take a look at the bombing of the hospital. I think it is apparent, maybe even to a six-year-old, that that is not a Qassam rocket. What was fired at the hospital was a U.S.-made and U.S.-supplied JDAM, an all-weather precision-guided munition. The JDAM kit can be used with a variety of bomb types, including the MK-84, which is what is suspected to have been used here. And this was a gift from President Joe Biden to Israel and to the Palestinian people, you know, in the form of body bags. Um, and this is what the JDAM sound like. Okay, now let's hear the hospital explosion again. And that is them side by side. Regardless of what you may think of Hamas or the Israeli army. Regardless of who you think is evil. Maybe you think both are evil. It is fascinating how egregiously as asymmetrical is the arsenal of Hamas or PIJ versus the arsenal of Israeli army, of the Israeli army, and what both are doing with it. And we should absolutely not ignore this point. The Israeli army is not only the most powerful army in the region, but one of the most powerful armies in the world. They have 600 different aircraft, with the world's second largest collection of the famous F-16s Fighting Falcon and its variants. They have over 360 F-16s in active service. They also have about 30 F-35 stealth fighters that can enter foreign territory completely undetected, and they can fire targets at 160 kilometers away. Not to mention the horde of unmanned aerial vehicles like drones, which by the way is an Israeli invention. And they have a dozen air-to-air -air refuelers and a two dozen special mission airplanes, and not to mention the entire U.S. arsenal at their beck and call. Do you want a reminder of the aerial force of Hamas? This is it. Crossing the border using paragliders. It was not a Palestinian militant rocket that destroyed the Lahali Hospital. They don't have that arsenal. It was a U.S. made Israeli bomb. And I am not even going to delve into all of the other scathing evidence that proves this claim. How when the hospital was hit, the Israelis, through their official channels, cheered the destruction of terrorists. But when the gruesome reality of civil ca civilian casualties emerged, they backtracked and they deleted the tweet. And then they blamed it on a rocket fired by the Islamic Jihad that malfunctioned. Nor am I going to detail how in their attempt to shift that blame, Israel's official account on Twitter uploaded a fake video in a tweet about the alleged rocket. But when they realized that the timestamp did not fit the story, they deleted the video. The screenshots you're seeing are screenshots that I took myself with my own phone, by the way. Nor am I going to remind you that they called the hospital three days in a row to tell them to evacuate. You can go listen to the press conference given by the Anglican Archbishop Hossam Naum, where he says he received uh, specific warnings by phone for three days straight to evacuate the hospital. Just listen to him. Like all the people of North Gaza, all at least 15 hospitals, received the warning, including the Arab Ali Hospital, they received the warning to evacuate the hospital. Uh, and then... Nor the fact that the Israeli army said that they relied on Al Jazeera footage to prove that it was a PIJ missile. They used Al Jazeera footage to allegedly confirm these claims. But you're asking me for, for proof? You don't need to get proof from me. All you need to do is switch over to Al Jazeera, who broadcasted it live, and you can actually see. I got a screen cap caption just for you to see. This is Al Jazeera from last night. But then Al Jazeera themselves released a short documentary completely debunking um, these allegations as lies. And here's a sped up version of their conclusion in that documentary. According to all feeds and videos analyzed, this rocket was intercepted and was the last one launched from Gaza before the bombing of the hospital. As a result, Al Jazeera digital investigations team found no grounds to the Israeli army claim. 
Nor am I going to discuss how Israel ordered 22 hospitals to be evacuated, something that the WHO called a death sentence for patients who could not be moved, nor am I going to discuss how on October 14th Israel targeted ambulances and killed 28 medical staff in Gaza. But what I am going to remind you of is that the Israeli government's playbook is to lie about their crimes. From Qana massacre of a UN refugee camp in Lebanon in, two, in 1996, or the 2006 beach massacre of an entire family, or the bombed UNRWA site, um, to the killing of journalist Shirin Abu Akli, uh, Israel always blamed someone else. Always blame, always say it wasn't them. And then human rights groups, the UN, the media always uncovered that they were lying. But no one holds them accountable. Western jur journalists rush to report blood libel. This week alone, how 40 babies were beheaded by the bloodthirsty, awful, disgusting human animals, savage Palestinians, including the US president who lied about it, only to find out that there was no evidence for it, but nobody retracted it. They completely ignore Palestinian accounts of what happens on the ground, but they keep taking Israel's word as the only word to report, despite their record of lying. When Israel says that, yes, PIJ bombed Al Ahli Hospital, regardless of what kind of arsenal they may have, uh, just ignore that fact. Sure, sure, forget all evidence, just believe them. So before I go, I would like to leave a message to the international community particularly to President Emmanuel Macron, President Joe Biden, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, um, all of the moguls behind those media corporations in the West. You are the architects of unspeakable horror. You are the embodiment of gross incompetence and sadistic cruelty. Your legacy in the history books will forever brand you as enablers of the genocide of one of the world's most impoverished, defenseless, and vulnerable populations. You have collectively turned their living into a horrifying extermination camp, offering inexplainable support to one of the most hyper-militarized and ruthless armies on the planet. Your weapons, your funding, your unwavering political support, and your lies have been instrumental in the unspeakable slaughter and devastation that we are forced to witness. This is a stain on your conscience that can never and should never be erased.